Dick Nurse and I are excited to be with you tonight and want to thank you, Ruth, Reber, and Talik James, for including us in our documentary, Quakers, The Quiet Revolutionaries. I really knew nothing about Quakers or Quakerism until I visited Vietnam on a delegation of peace activists in 1987. Quakers were there participating in reconciliation with the Vietnamese, while the United States had an embargo against Vietnam and watched us worried that we were trading with the enemy. A decade later, these experiences led me to the Quakers and an expedition to the UK led by some Philadelphia pilgrims who planned to follow in the footsteps of their founder, George Fox. I heard his vision of a great people to be gathered before struggling up the sacred mountain called Pendle Hill in the fog and rain. When we finally reached the top, the clouds parted and the sun came out. Was this a leading, I wondered. I was just learning about the early Quakers, the revolutionary activists who fought against the Church of England, were tortured for what they believed in, and we were shown the prison where as many as 400 died, where a mouth bridle was used on those who spoke out. I could well understand why survivors followed William Penn to the New World. I began to think about the challenge that this story presented and the partners I would need. Candace McCoy, a friend with criminologist credentials, offered to do a scout trip of Lancaster prison for us. And we had a Kickstarter campaign, which gave us seed money and showed us that we did have the confidence of friends. Then Dick Nurse, who was a former vice president of Rutgers and executive director of a Tony award-winning theater, agreed with me that there was a potential audience here beyond friends. But it was tricky because the script called for filming a meeting in progress. It was a strong leading that caused me to participate in making this film. The thing is, it wasn't my leading, it was Janet Gardner's. We were both members of Princeton Monthly Meeting and when she stood up and explained that she planned to produce this documentary, I thought I might learn something. I was retired, so I volunteered to help. That was in 2013. We had two objectives in mind. One, to reveal Quaker history, and two, to clear up Quaker mystery. Now, with regard to history, I'm not saying that all of us Quakers don't precisely know how we got here, but I personally learned a whole lot of new information once we started filming. And the more I learned, the more I realized I didn't know. Conversations with weighty Quakers and our own research and travels led to dozens and dozens of tiresome corrections, reshoots, and film edits to get the thing right. We hope it's made us better Quakers. Now the mystery. I'm not a birthright Quaker, and after sending in my letter and being welcomed by a visiting clearness committee, I invited my uncle, who was a bartender from Brooklyn, to join me one Sunday at Princeton Friends Meeting House. His response was that he didn't have one of those black hats the guy wears on a box of oats. And he couldn't get there unless he could drive his own car instead of one of those horse and buggies. I'm afraid that's the same confusion in the minds of most non-Quakers in the general public. And we wanted to clear that up. The film you're about to see is currently being broadcast by public TV stations across the country. 
We've been told that from mid-May to mid-June, 66,000 households have tuned in to Quakers, the Quiet Revolutionaries. That would be 66,000 households who are no longer confused. We ask your help in notifying your friends who live in cities where our future TV broadcasts will happen. Share this internet link with your friends. It's our educational website. It will list dates, times, and stations. It's www.quakersthefilm.com www.quakersthefilm.com Soon this summer there will be DVDs available through the website. Now two generous committed friends have already made an advanced purchase of 150 copies to be distributed to each monthly meeting, each friend's school, and each senior living home in the Philadelphia yearly meeting region. Documentaries are expensive to make and not normally underwritten by mega studios such as Paramount, Warner Brothers, Universal, or the old Cecil B. DeMille. Instead, we sought and received help from generous individuals and many Quaker foundations like Shoemaker, Tyson, Obadiah Brown, Dolly and Pemberton. Janet received a timely Guggenheim Fellowship while we were in production and that helped us along. We're hopeful that Quakers, the Quiet Revolutionaries will assist meetings, friend schools, Quaker senior facilities, and individual friends in creating a greater understanding, appreciation, and interest in the Religious Society of Friends.